I dedicated this week on that premise that these matters would be handled back to back up to today. And we expected the complaint and chair to also exhibit a similar vigilance and the commitment to ensure that this matter is disposed of today. Chair, yesterday we are here, there were only two witnesses. Today we have only one witness. And the, the complainant on Tuesday did not turn up. And the committee on its own motion or volition, I don't know the reasons, but committee, for one reason or another, was compelled not to sit on Tuesday. Understandably, Chair, yeah, probably there were just five reasons. I can't fault the committee. And we had to adjust accordingly. So yesterday we are here, today we are here, and we thought the matter would be concluded today. The Honorable Chinya Matama is not here. Yesterday she did not turn up, and she has a duty, much as she has already given her testimony, to mobilize the witnesses to be here. She's not here to give a full account as to why the rest of the witnesses are not here. So the adjournment being suggested by the committee, or the committee is about to make, may be injudicious. It may prejudice us, Chair, and indeed it will prejudice us, the defense, in that we prepared to have this matter concluded today. The unfortunate be the whole of next week, because of the schedules the committee made, and the commitments I had to make to be here the whole of this week, I had to reschedule what I was supposed to do this week to next week, on that premise that let's have this matter handled decisively within this week. Now, pushing it to next week, see, prejudicing us again, Chair, without even the complainant explaining as to why the witnesses are not here. So, Chair, I would pray under the circumstances that you be pleased, Chair, to take a decision to conclude these proceedings today. My client, this is the last mm -hmm. issue I'm raising. My client uh, was also scheduled to have been at the earlier communication. We indicated that we had some health issues and was supposed to go for some checkup. And in the response given by the committee, sometime uh, uh, about two weeks ago, that those were not justifiable reasons. Because we had given three reasons. We had the matter in the Supreme Court, and another one was about his RFA concerns or issues. And that was not accepted by the committee. Did um, the committee say, come even if you are sick? Could you have the committee say that? Well, um, really? No, no. <laughs> anyway, Chair, I want to conclude yeah, the but evidence. I also don't, I want to record it. Mm. To say that our client said he was sick and we said it is unacceptable. Mm. Is it unacceptable to fall sick or for somebody to say I'm sick? The committee indicated that that ground was not meritorious. It didn't have lacked merit. I don't that, that's the way I understood it. If I misconstrued it, I beg, I beg for your indulgence. Uh, please, uh, let us do this. Let, because we don't want you to uh, no, insinuate unfairness on the part of the committee. Chair, what I'm saying is that's the way I understood the communication from the committee. If I misconstrued it, I beg for the excuse. I beg for the excuse, Chair. I have read this letter again. It never says anything like that. Mm -hmm. What the letter says, it said, in the same letter you are that the committee did not consult you before adjourning the matter. <laughs> the committee takes exception to this allegation. We, since the matter in question was adjourned in your presence and at your request, suffice note that the committee had initially granted you one week within which to secure the services of another lawyer to which you objected. You 
requesting for two weeks, which the committee granted. It's upon this premise that the committee adjourned the proceeding to the, to the 27th of Tuesday, 10 a.m. Additionally, the committee were adjourning the matter informed you that the above date would serve as the last adjournment text to be ready to proceed until the hearing. Consequently, the committee finds your final adjournment based, yes, based on the need to assemble a legal team to represent you in its proceedings and tenable. Regarding your unavailability to attend proceedings of the committee on Wednesday 28th, due to other proceedings in the Supreme Court, the committee finds merit and according it adjourn. So where is this issue about sickness? The letter we had written <coughs> addressed the issue of health. We had, the, the reply addresses itself to two issues. One, the one it finds itself uh, an exception and is stated it. Okay. And then the second one, which is certainly can't even be debated because you are proceeding in the Supreme Court, please. I think it's unfair. And, and let's proceed really fairly on both sides. To allege unfairness on our part, we take exception in this honorable circuit. It is clear the letter speaks for itself. Let us now proceed to the request. One, uh, we we appreciate that uh, we are given ourselves for two weeks to conclude this matter. And the reason the matter has gone on uh, a little bit and decided to wrong. That's number one. Number two, all the witnesses in these proceedings are our witnesses. They're not your witnesses. That's why we suggest, because this is an inquiry, that's why we suggest that if you want, you have an uh, a witness, please let us know and we summon. I've also looked at the rules. There is no rule that requires Honorable Chinyamatama to be here all the time. There is none. There is no rule that requires and our rules. So whether she is here or not for us, we shall proceed. And we have no apologies because she cannot come here except when she has been summoned. And even when she comes here, she has no right to cross-examine your witness. Even you, you may also decide whether you want it or not. And those are our rules. We are not reinventing the wheel. About the timelines we said, yes, they are very strict, but they are not cast in stone. They may, the lawyers say there is what we call mandatory or, or what? You know? Yeah, discretion and so on. And that remains within the discretion of the court. We can't, this committee cannot tie our hands that sees this, because if there is evidence we know we have not had, we will accommodate, including the Honorable Zaka, if there is any reason he feels for adjournment, he can always apply, and we shall get him that opportunity. So, this matter is going to be adjourned to Tuesday, the, unless you have any objection to that date, and give us the date you are available. Thing. Next week is a bit tricky for me, but I don't want to bogle down the proceedings. It's a bit tricky. I don't want. I want to appreciate if you are engaged, okay? Yes, and we shall accommodate each other, because as I said, these timelines are not hard. Cast in what? In the stone matters, they are very serious. I must repeat. So, can we give ourselves next week and we we'll resume the other week Tuesday? But let us have this final, colleagues. Unless we have got the issue of quorum, this matter will be concluded that week and we shall not make a no adjournment. And that is now definite. Okay? This is purely the last adjournment we shall have. So, we shall set ourselves what is the date? The other Tuesday, 26th, how many witnesses are, are remaining?
There are three. We can dispose of those people in the uh, in one day. On no Vozaki, you are not supposed to speak except through your language. If you want anything, it whisper, you whisper to the man on your right. Passes two days in the case. Because I don't want again issues to raise that we say this one or what. So 26 and 27, that matter is closed. And there shall be no any other adjustment. 26 and 27. Please let us not follow sick. Remember, even if I'm not here, because of sick is a matter, we will proceed. And we hope the Honorable Zake will be done with the hospitals that next week. So thank you very much, uh, colleagues and the Honorable Lukwagandia legal team.